Hello and welcome back adventurers! Get comfy as I start my introduction to Darkon's history with a creation myth that all Darkonians believe to be true. In the beginning, the world was dead, a grey realm devoid of color and passion. Pale spirits of the dead, of the neverborn, populated the grey realm. These shades wandered aimlessly through this existence, watched over by death itself. Death ruled over the grey realm with its three companions, three horsemen, sickness, starvation and strife. What gave death its power over the Grey Realm was the secret it held. Death alone possessed the knowledge of its antithesis, life. Eons passed unnoticed while death gloated over the little secret. Eventually, a fluttering spirit called Darkonus happened to steal a glance over the death's captive. That brief glimpse was enough for Darkonus to feel sensations of curiosity, identity and purpose. He was not yet alive, but he was no longer truly dead. Darkonus longed to claim the spark of life. He could not unlock the mystery of it, but he did discover pale limitation, the crude animating force imbued within the golems. Curious, Death ordered Darkonus drugged to his throne, where Darkonus proclaimed that he has stolen the secret of life. Enraged, Death revealed the spark of life within his grasp. Darkonus immediately leaped forward and seized the spark, placing it within himself. That's how he became the first living thing. Death ordered the mage stopped, as one horseman struck Darkonus down, yet the life escaped through his mortal wounds, pulsing in torrent across the Grey Realm. As it washed over the flittering spirits, they too were imbued with life. The land itself awoke, and the sun rose for the first time. Some spirits touched only by a few drops of life, and were merely tainted with hunger and ambition. They became the first undead. Unable to bear the dawning of life, Death and the truly dead retreated beyond the borders of the living world. The land of Darkon, stolen from the dead, was carved from the Grey Realm. For long, Darkon existed outside of the mists. Scholars called that time the Age of Arcane, but eventually the Age of the Strongest Wizards came to an end. In the late fall of 579 Brovan calendar, Darkon merged with Brovan Cluster to create the court with Aslan Rex as the ruler. Occult scholars have long known that prior to his arrival in Darkon, Aslan spent almost four decades studying planar matters under Count Strahd von Zarevich's supervision. The mutual hatred remains the staff of legend. Aslan spent the first months of his reign raising an army. By some accounts, he originally formed the Kargat, the secret vampire wizard police, to lead his forces into Borovia to repay Strahd for his kindness. The impending war, however, never grew beyond a handful of raids and border skirmishes. It is believed that the war was thwarted when Strahd's soldiers infiltrated the Darkonian war camp in the spring of 580 and assassinated the Kargat's leaders. Aslan's war efforts faltered and Strahd never retaliated. Ultimately, the two leaders simply lost interest in each other. In the spring of 588 Borovian calendar, the Scourge of Arak wiped out the entire culture in a single day. The few Arakans left behind in Darkon had nothing to return to and soon faded into the Darkon populace. The people of the core reacted to the scourge with all the horror reserved for the Requiem today. They shunned Arak as a no-man land, cutting off Darkon's mainland route to the southern core. Even so, a stream of immigrants, both foreigners from the south and the outlanders from distant realms, were drawn to Darkon, steadily expanding the kingdom's population. Darkon certainly suffered setbacks during this era, but none threatened the nation so severely as the plague known as the Crimson Death. Incredibly violent, the Crimson Death could kill in days, a hideous demise that ended with the victim bleeding to death through their skin. Fatality reports trace the plague spread back to the Boglands in the autumn of 688, though its true origin remains a mystery. Despite the administration of healers, the plague swept throughout the country and wiped out as much as 20% of the population over the course of a single winter. In the 700s, on four occasions within a span of little more than 20 years, the Volkovian warlord Vlad Drakov gathered his troops and ordered them into Darkon and to claim Aslan's crown. Every invasion ended in a crushing Falconian defeat. Drakov's armies vastly outnumbered the Darkonian defenders, yet it took Drakov four humiliating defeats to come to grips with the full power of Aslan's wrath. As the troops slaughtered each other on the battlefield, Aslan reached out of Avernus and animated broken corpses of the fallen. Every soldier cut down rose again to rend Falconian flesh. Every invasion ended in mere days as the decimated Falconians broke into a panic retreat for the border. That was the end to what was later called Dead Man's Campaign. Darkon's fortunes would turn for the worse in 735 Baron calendar, for Aslan discovered a Vistani prophecy, Viscosa Sexad, listing six events that would portend the coming of the Grand Conjunction. 
a plan or inversion in which everything in the Land of the Mists would be cast out. Aslin then spent the next five years somehow forcing these events to take place, thus prematurely bringing about the conjunction. Yet the same theorists posit that Aslan might have inadvertently saved the world. By artificially manipulating the complex of events, Aslan perhaps weakened them, causing the Grand Conjunction to collapse before its completion. The end result, of course, was the Great Upheaval of 740. In hindsight, it becomes clear that the failure of the Great Upheaval stung Aslan badly. To recover, he turned his attention to his most terrible creation. The Doomsday Device was the artifact of awesome power designed to drain the souls of countless mortals and channel that energy into Aslan in a single concentrated burst. Aslan would be transformed into a being of pure spiritual energy, powerful enough to pierce the mists and travel the planets beyond. Aslan and his apprentices toiled at the project throughout the 740s, with the earliest known prototype constructed in 748. Aslan soon unleashed a secret cabal of murderers, the Ebonfold, into Darkonan's neighbors. Armed with enchanted daggers, the Ebonfold spent two years collecting souls for their master. Late in 749, Aslan's minions activated the final prototype of the Doomsday Device, using a Kargat officer named Lovelin Dachi, who believed himself to be Aslan's bastard child. I believe the spectral entity that now rules the necropolis is none other than Lovelin himself, lost in delusions that he is the mythic figure, Death. A year later, Aslan performed the darkest night ceremony known as the Requiem in Second Aluk. At the stroke of midnight on the winter solstice of 750, Aslan sealed himself within the true Doomsday device and activated it. The ensuing wave of energy expanded in every direction, reaching every border. Their cons planar fabric was insidiously altered, and a spiritual malice fell across the land. The era that followed is now known as the Shrouded Years. Their con was left with neither king nor heir. Always an ambitious lot, the nobles turned on each other. The surviving Kargat went underground, hiding from the folk who fought them dead. Vlad Drakov wasted no time in seizing on Darkon's frailty. In March of 751, he again drove his armies into Darkon, and for the first time since the invasion of 700, his troops penetrated as far as Nartok. Convinced that their city would fall, the citizens of Nartok were united in terror. And then the dead rose. Even with Aslan destroyed, the corpses still crawled from their graves to attack Drakov's troops. Volkovian morale shattered once more, and their armies broke into full retreat. Then came the drowning of dreams. All across the wounded nation, seemingly random people suffered from particular nightmares, often involving warped memories or sensation of drowning in a lightless void. Scholars believe that the Requiem's energy wave scattered Aslan's essence to far corners of Darkon, literally merging him with every life force in the kingdom. As he was slowly recovering, the people of Darkon sometimes subconsciously sensed the struggle he endured. After three years, Aslan had recovered enough of himself to think. He contacted his fellow trusted allies through their dreams to plan his salvation. It involved the creation of an object called a Soul Focus, an arcane phylactery that would channel Aslan's scattered essence into a new corporeal shell. Unfortunately, Death could also sense the drowning dreams, alerting of Aslan's plans as quickly as his allies. In the following months, tales spread that three hideous undead riders were on the move, leaving swaths of destruction in their wake. The rest of the events are shrouded in mystery, but I hope my listeners are not surprised to hear that Aslan's spores ultimately succeeded late in the summer of 755 Brogan calendar, and Aslan returned to rule Darkon once more. Thank you so much for your time, patient listeners. Now that you know more about Aslan Rex, I hope you will reconsider visiting Darkon. But if you are still feeling brave enough, be careful while crossing the mists.